Hi, this is David. Today we're going to talk about Azure Functions and specifically binding within Azure Functions. And in fact, more specifically, binding to Cosmos DB databases in Azure Functions. Now, if you've been watching this series, you know that Azure Cosmos DB database is a NoSQL database. It's non-relational, it's schemaless, it's highly scalable, it's highly distributed, it's highly reliable. It's based in the cloud, based in Azure. It's a document database. Uh, and um, I've created one right here in my document database or in my, in my Azure account here. Uh, I have a Cosmos DB database and if you can um, very quickly add a database and a collection to this Cosmos DB account, you can do so under Quick Start. I've already done here, but there's actually a button here to say create a sample database and a sample collection in this account. And you can see that right here in the Data Explorer. I have a, a database called To-Do List and I have a collection called items, and there are no documents there right now, but it's it's there, it's ready to receive some data. I based it on the uh, the SQL API. But that's what we're going to use here. So once I've, I've created that already, and I've got a connection string, and I can see the connection string down here in keys, I'm going to delete this right after this video is done, so don't bother writing this down, but here, the either one of these will work, the primary connection or the secondary collection. You can click on that and copy it, and then we're going to use that when we write some code to... Uh, uh, access this, some functions to access. I should say we're going to some functions. We're going to write very little code actually. So what we're going to do is we'll go to this project right here. This is a Visual Studio C Sharp solution. I created it with File, New, Project, and if you go and select the Azure Functions right here, which are under Cloud, Azure Functions, uh, and select version 2.0 of the functions, all of the references will get set up for you and you can add the Cosmos DB later but it'll it'll have a single function and while I deleted that function I created my own so for example I have this insert item and I decided that uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert something called a to do item so this thing is a list of items to do and I wanted it to be I want to do some validation this is my database does node validation. It's NoSQL, it's schemaless. I can put whatever documents I want in there, but I want to validate these in my application before I put it. So what I did is I created this to-do item class, and it has an ID property, that's a string, a description property, and an is complete property. And I use these JSON properties just because by convention these are lowercase in J in uh, JSON file, but they tend to be uh, uppercase. In other words, these are camel case versus mixed case in .NET just conventions are using. So um, this thing is going to match the document that I'm going to send it and insert into my database. All right, so there's my schema. And here is my code to insert this item. And I'll put finger quotes around the quote because if you look in this, in this function, you'll see this very little code right here. All I have is I get these three lines of code which simply pull out of the body of the request and I say request because I'm using an HTTP trigger this would work with any kind of a trigger but in this case I'm going to do a an HTTP trigger it's a, a post to a URL and I'll get this HTTP request it will come in and I pull out of that the data and I'll convert it into a document of type to do item that's right here this is just logging. It doesn't really do anything. It's just if I want to troubleshoot later, I'll make sure I got that far. It's helpful. And then I'm going to return a uh, 201, HTTP status 201, which means created. And that's it. You'll notice that there are there is no code in here to actually do the insert. And that's because that's all handled up here in this parameter. I've decorated this parameter, this to-do item document, with this Cosmos DB right here. The Cosmos DB has a database, it has a collection name, and it has a connection string right here. So that tells it where it needs to put it, where it needs to put this document in the database. The Cosmos DB connection maps to here in my local settings JSON file. That is exactly the same as this setting right here. And there is my connection string that I pasted from the portal earlier. If I go back to here, then I see also I have a database and a, and a uh, collection name, and that, you may remember, maps to my
my database and my connections. So that's enough information to tell it where to put it and then just kind of the magic of this binding by decorating up this Cosmos DB attribute, it knows to take this document and put it, insert it into that database, even though there's no code for doing that. So let me show you how that works. I'm going to run this. Here, and there's my insert item. If I highlight that right there, and control C to copy it, then I can go over to Postman. Postman is a free tool that you can download that allows you to test HTTP. And I've already got it right here. And here's my, um, the, I'm going to send it some JSON. So you notice this is a post to this URL right here. And in the body of that post, I'm going to send this information, an ID, description, and it is complete. And I have to have that structure because in my application, I'm going to convert that into a to-do item. That's the scheme that you do item. So one, wake up, uh, description, uh, ID one, description, wake up, is complete, is true. And I click on send right here, and I should get back a 201, which is the created response. And I do. And you can see also over here that there's some logging that happened right there based on my code and then also based on some regular output. And I go back over here to the Azure portal and refresh this collection, you'll see there's that document right there. And it's one and wake up is complete is true. It's an extra stuff that it, that a Cosmos DB wants to put in there. So let me add a few more documents here. So I had wake up and then next one will be ID two, get out of bed. That is complete as true also. And then the third one, ID3, right here, is complete as false. Drag a comb across my head. Alert listeners will recognize it, the lyrics of a Beatles song in there. And if I go back to the portal and look at the Storage Explorer and refresh that, you'll see one, two, and three. And there they all are in here. All right, so without really writing any code, any any kind of database code, or just decorating it, I'm able to insert rows into this Cosmos DB. Let's see if, how we can get data out of there, read data from that Cosmos DB from an Azure function. In here, I have a function called get items, and it's also an HTTP trigger, it's triggered by the get function right here, and it has uh, again this Cosmos DB decorator on this parameter right here, to do items. This in fact is an I enumerable of this to do item. So I'm going to get a, a set of to do items, a, a list or an array of some kind. And this part here is the same. Database name is to do list, collection name is that, connection string is Cosmos DB connection. So it'll connect to the same data account, database, and collection. And this has a SQL query, select star from items, which just says get everything from there. And I'm also passing this logger so I can log stuff out. Um, so forget about the logging, that's just troubleshooting stuff. Um, all I do in here is I'm just checking to see to make sure that I return something. If I got a, a, a null back, then I just want to log something. If I didn't get a null back, then I'll, uh, I know that I, I have um, something to return. And it might have zero elements, it might have some elements. So this is all this, this condition logic is doing here. If it's zero elements, then I just report there's nothing to be found. If, there's, if there are some, then I make sure that there is a count of those. I'm casting it to a list so I can get that count. And then I return a 200, HTTP 200, which is a status of OK. And in that, in the body of that, I'll actually return that list. So if we, if we run this one here, which I think it's still running, yep, it is, then it's going to be this get items. Let me come up here and copy that get items and paste it into Postman right there as a get request. And I'll send that. I should get an array. This means array in JSON of these three items. One, two, three. Wake up, get out of bed, drag a comb across my head. Uh, all right, that's very cool. Now, how about if I wanted to get just one of those items? Well, if I wanted to get by the ID, that's simple. 
there's actually this Cosmos DB has a special parameter called ID, and I can set that equal to some value. Now, I could hard code that value, but that's not very flexible. What I'll do instead is I'll set it to a variable. And the way I get a variable in here is I have to modify the route. And the route, you may have noticed that the route was API slash the name of the function. But I want to change that a little bit in this one. In this case, I'm going to call set the route equal to get item slash a variable named ID. And those curly braces around it say that this is a variable. So once I put those curly braces around it, then I could use that ID elsewhere. And that's what I'm doing right here. I'm specifying it right here. And there is really nothing in here to query the database. It's just returning either found an object or not found an object. So if, if it doesn't return anything, I'll get a, a null. In other words, I pass it an ID that just doesn't exist in the database, then I should get a null and I'll return a 404 HTTP status, meaning not found. If it does find it, I'll return a, a, a 200. OK. And I'll wrap in the body of that. I'll, I'll send the actual item that is returned. So that's pretty nice. I'm going to run this one right here, and the route will be get item slash ID. So what I'm going to do is instead of get items, I'm going to say get item slash, and remember I had IDs 1, 2, and 3, so I'll just do ID 2 and send that, and that's what I get back is just ID 2. Now what if I want to query on something else, or do anything a little more complex than that, then I can, I can do that as well. And I've got an example of that here in this get complete items. In this case, this is a lot like the get items where I got them all, except that I've modified the SQL query to say select star from items where items i where i dot is complete. So I only want those where is complete is true. And I think one and two were true and three was false. So I should just get the first two items here. And once again, there's really nothing special about this. So there's no code, it's just logging and just checking to see where this to do item which automatically gets populated, making sure that that actually has something in it and the count is greater than zero. That's all I'm doing, and I'm going to return that list back with a uh, an HTTP 200 status, an OK status. So if I do this, and up here I see that it's uh, API slash get complete items right here, then I'll go in here and I'll specify Instead of get items, I'll say get complete items right there. And send that get request, and there I do. So there I get that array right here. Uh, and that's it. That's This is really a powerful tool for accessing databases. In this example, it's Cosmos D, but doing so without writing a lot of code, just using the power of the bindings to do this for you. So less code generally means less bugs, less things to test. There's a big advantage to that. Now, if you want to look at this code, I've got it available online. I published it to my GitHub repository right here. So you want to get to my GitHub repository, it's github.com slash my name right here. And this one is called Azure Function Demos. And I've got a bunch of stuff in Azure Function Demos I'm going to be adding to this over the next few months. But the one that we're concerned with today is the Cosmos DB binding demo right there. And in here, you'll see that whole project is right here. All those functions are here. A little readme describing what each one is. Uh, if you want to know details about that, you want to read about it rather than listen to me tell you about it, then click check this article out here. This is one that I wrote. It's on my blog. And it is right here. It's called Cosmos DB Binding in Azure Functions. And it's linked from my GitHub that uh, GitHub readme file as well. And on that, I go into detail about how to set up the database, the code in each function. I break down each section of the code and what it's doing. And I do that for all four of those demos right here. All right, so we are learning about Azure Functions and binding to Cosmos DB automatically. This is David. Thank you for watching. Thank you.